And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Azorius Control. Our second deck today that's our uh, 5-0 Friday is what we're doing today. Where usually with 5-0 Fridays, we take um, decks that were published in the Magic Online deck list that went 5-0 in an event. And we play those um, in ranked and play a few matches with them. But we're kind of doing a special edition of 5-0 Friday today where we're taking... a few of the decks from the Mythic Championship this weekend and trying them out. Uh, we just played um, Luis Salvato's Sultai Ramp here. We're going to be playing Ben Stark's Azorius Control. And uh, over on the Patreon um, side, if, if y'all are a member of the Patreon, uh, you know that I wrote um, a very short little thing with just a, kind of like a little blurb of some decks that I think will do well and decks that I think won't do well at the Mythic Championship because we got to see all of the deck lists uh, yesterday. And also I picked a deck to win it all and I, f I chose this one. I said that Azorius Control was going to win it all. So we'll see you know throughout the Mythic Championship if I'm going to be right on that or not. But I'm, I'm basically pretty high on this deck. I think Planar Cleansing is just awesome. I think it this deck can do a good job of going over the top. It can, you know, drawing cards with Gadwick, um, Finale, Chemistry's Insight, stuff like that. I just think it's a, a pretty solid deck, especially for a slower metagame and a metagame that has tons and tons of Casualties of War. Casualties of War was the most registered non-land card tied with Witch's Oven in the entire event. So just lots of Witch's Ovens and lots of Casualties of War. And this deck is just pretty good against Casualties of War because you basically have, like, Teferi and some lands as, like, targets. You know, so it basically can blank Casualties of War, which is going to be everywhere. And it has Planar Cleansing that can clean up um, an entire mess of a battlefield. So I, I think it's a, a good choice for that for the tournament. And so that's why I picked it as a winner, even though there's only... I think there's only three people playing Azorius Control out of the 67. So we'll see how it does, though. But for today, we're going to be playing four matches over in Ranked with it. So we're going to be doing with all three decks. We're going to be playing four matches in Ranked. And this one in particular may take a while. So traditional, standard, Ranked. It's a slow deck, for sure. So why no White Finale? Yeah, it's, it's basically... This deck's not really playing any cards that are just specifically... And that's that's one thing I like about it. It doesn't have any cards that are really designed on, on only winning the game and doing nothing else. And that's kind of what White Finale does. Even though White Finale can do some blocking, though, as well. So it can, it can also help you stabilize. So I guess that's not all it does. But it's just trying to play a super, super long game. Use Castle Ardenvale, um, Brazen Borrower, and Gadwick as creatures to attack the opponent after you've cast a planar cleansing or two hit enough land drops hit that finale for 10 uh to reshuffle all your absorbs back Fine. <laughs> i can't think of a control deck that you would not call annoying yeah no no narset um I guess the, with the planar cleansing, you want to play as little permanence as possible. There are still Teferis because of how strong that card is, how it's just very good at slowing opponents down. <clears throat> so there's still that. Hitting land drops is a very important thing that control decks need to be able to do. So I kept a six lander. Kind of thinking that we were going to be drawing some more spells to go with all these lands, but maybe not. We may not draw a, a spell the whole time. I think I let that resolve because I need to counter a Nessa if there's a Nessa.
So our likely win condition here, you know, them being a Cavalier of Thorn deck, likely what we're going to be trying to do is mill our opponent out. Basically, just try to survive long enough where they draw too many cards. So their life total is already at 43. Forty-two now. <laughs> sure, wish you could draw some land. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna miss any land drops. Don't have to worry about that too much. So we already have 10 lands out of the deck because of the Fabled Passage, so there's 17 more. Well, there we go. Those are spells. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Of course, they get to replay the Cavalier and re-ramp, but that mills over another five cards. Here we go. They scry, they kept the other one on top also, so if they play Cavalier, they're probably milling over that card. Hmm. Alright, so they're gonna mill over. Oh, they put the card on the bottom? Okay, they put that on the bottom. So it was. I don't know, it must have been Krasis? I've got it! All the vetoes, none of the absorbs. Yeah, I wouldn't mind them getting a lot of cards, but I guess not at this exact moment. I'd like to have like a Time Wiper, a Planar Cleansing first, before they get a ton of cards. Manually tapping them all. Just gonna tap every single land manually. Okay. Nothing. So they put that on the bottom, too. Thirty two cards. I 
I just don't have a sweeper. If I had a sweeper... You manly tap to help you count the mana? That makes sense. Well, that's... That's not a good agent of treachery. Take the Teferi. Then I don't get to counter. Let's try this. Thank you. I'll take that back. Um Still don't have a sweeper. Oh, that's a good call, Cali Commuter. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say... I wouldn't really say Gadwick is better or worse than Krasis. They, they kind of do a little bit different things. Gadwick draws... You know, Gadwick is just drawing more cards than Krasis. You know, draws twice as many cards. But Krasis does a better job of ending games with attacking. Yeah, this is how I always had a hand, like, when I was playing, because, like, whenever you're playing, like, this is kind of the first card you see. If you put, like, this card's, like, in the back. This card's in the front. Alright, so we're in a great spot here with this Gadwick. So I have I have these spells that I can just play to be able to tap the Hydroid Crisis. So I, I still do have another... I have another three turns of tapping this Hydroid Crisis. Kind of just looking for a blue finale to reshuffle. They're at 29. Let's do Chemistry's Insight. There we go. Time wipe's pretty good too. We're gonna pick our Gadwick back up. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, Gadwick does not get owned by Legion's End. That's all by Legion's End. That's also true. All right, they're at 28. How much do I want to draw? We'll do six. I was going to say no land drop. Good thing we did the sixth one. There's finale. I think it's not that scary. So they have two two Nissas left. Those are the first two Nissas. I think we can handle whatever they got with this million cards over here. Alright, so this is a good Planar Cleansing matchup. Planar Cleansing does not destroy Nissa land, like the 3-3s. Three uh, lands that are 3-3s. Three Besides that, you know, destroys everything else. So I think it's going to be a good uh, Planar Cleansing time wipe matchup. Yeah, Sub Zero. It will be fixed on on Tuesday. All right. So now, what do we want to take out for our two cards to take out, though? Fairy Time Raveler. I'm keeping in the three vetoes. I think they're going to be even better after sideboarding. I think I take out one Borrower, one Teferi. Call it a day. I kind of want to add in Mystical Disputes. I don't know if I really have room for them, though. This is a really, really slow hand.
That's fine. We have a slow deck. What am I to hallowed fountain? All right, looks like the opponent did not have a slow hand. If I would have considered my opponent playing Lovestruck Beast immediately, I would have mulliganed my hand. To be on, to be fair, land. <laughs> These lands are coming in play tapped. That's okay. That means we're leaving all the un, the not coming to play tapped lands. Um, eleven. All right, so just playing the Absorb is a gain three life here, because hopefully we'll be tapping out. So just gain the three life. Land? Yeah. Now we don't die to Nyssa. Yeah, it lags on, on YouTube as well. If only that was that island was a white source, then I would have been able to make a a one one here as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all are right. It, the lag's definitely gotten worse since getting the since ordering the new PC. This PC knows its its days are numbered. It's trying to hang on, or maybe it's trying to make me upset. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have the cleanest plane ever. Yeah, the, the, I don't know who it is, the Food and Drug Administration, whoever comes in and gives the ratings for, like, food restaurants for clean, cleansiness, cleanse, yeah, they would give us an A for sure, our plane, yeah, so cleansed, so clean, so we're looking at X is 8 right now for finale,
That's why Gadwick's so good. It just forces you to overextend. Uh, negating my draw two. So do I want to turn Dovin's veto into a draw two? Nah, it's fine. I do kind of need to hit land drop still. <laughs> Can't have dessert until you cleanse your plane. These are good. Opt is a, a good source of tapping down the crisis. I mean, so is the Brazen Borrower, honestly. Oh, right. They were not done casting stuff. Eh, whatever. That's fine. Hmm. Just have to make sure I have a good plan for another Ceratops. Which at this current moment I don't have. Yeah, we can gust the, the dinosaur, but it just puts it back on, like, gusting the dinosaur would just put it back on top of the library for one turn. It's hardly a... Hardly a fix. Yeah, we need, yep, Teferi, for instance, Speed Rats. That would work. Still need more land drops. All right, I'm just gonna cast one of these. Look for land drops. There we go. And another Gadwick. This is not the fastest deck in the shed. Okay. 
All right, good old scry 10, or draw 10. Is this borrower in my hand? Or is it exiled? I think it's in my hand. Yeah, it should just be in my hand. All right, the options. The options. So I'm at 30 cards. What are they at, 28? If it has an orange glow, it's exiled. Okay, this one has an orange glow, so that one's exiled. They just don't want to play anything. Should probably start killing my opponent. I can no longer stand Here, you can have that back. Don't worry. Go ahead, draw some more it. cards. I dare ya. Yes, please. No over five. Mm. That one's kind of annoying. Okay, we're gonna keep bouncing. Cavalier Thorns. If they wanna replay Cavalier Thorns, it's perfectly fine with me. They wanna mill over five more cards. All right, one and oh. This is a slow deck. I think I should probably just reset after every single match here, honestly, with this deck. The thing is, it, it just gets to the point in the game where there's so many game objects around, you know, so many cards and, you know, graveyards and hands and stuff like that, that Arena starts bugging down. <laughs> it's okay, Weissman.
Yeah, no, you're right. This, this deck is pretty disgusting. It's it's very good. Hey, Soul Farmer. Yeah, we just saw the, the power of Gadwick for sure in those two games, just being able to keep the Krasis tap down, you know, try to make them overextend. We never even really had to Planar Cleansing, even though we had three of them. Just never even had to. Yeah, if you didn't hate Teferi so much, you'd probably like this deck a lot. I can understand that. What do we got this time? Golgari? Gruel. Yeah, yeah. one of my hands I, I kept was a, a six land hand. And I guess even the other game. Yeah, both games we kept really slow hands. But, I mean, that's everything in our deck is very slow. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Don't worry, I got this. Here goes nothing. Go, Brazen Bar, we're go. Another one, one. Ah, Bone Crusher Giant. All right, but yeah, now they're not going to be able to kill the Brazen Borrower, though. Okay, so Giant Killer in here. I love the Giant Killer. Um, the other day, I put a Giant Killer in the sideboard of uh, what was it? The the Bant deck that we played the other day, and I absolutely loved it in the sideboard there with that chop down. And I, I think it's just a really cool sideboard card and it looks like um, they did it here in the mythic championship deck as well i like it quite a bit so if i play glass caskets that means i'm probably not don't want to play planar cleansing i think that's pretty reasonable taking out planar cleansing playing glass casket instead just trying to have cheaper interaction Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. I don't know. Play like one planar cleansing.
Yeah, green and red. Like the, the decks that aren't green, a lot of the decks that are not green are red, you know, like Jeskai Fires or Rakdos Sacrifice. There's a lot of red decks around too. So yeah, the, the Aether Gus. There's not there's not too many decks that aren't green and aren't red. All right, we're going to play two Devout Decree and, and just two Glass Caskets then and take out another Borrower for the other Decree. <laughs> you got to remove the Berries and Borrowers. Azorius is not actually supposed to kill people. <laughs> All right, let's draw some spells. Spell. Good. That's a that's a spell. All right, get another land out of the deck. Got to thin it, make it, you know, a two percent less chance for us to draw a land. Um, that's annoying. Hmm. I don't have anything for that except for planar cleansing. Ugh, to fairy bounce, then absorb. That's gonna be a problem. There's 27 lands in the deck. It would be nice for me just to keep the giant killer there because I can pick it up with time wipe. But I think I value the three life more. So obviously if they have more haste creatures, if they have another haste creature here, we're kind of toast. That's a good sign. It's a really good sign. Permanent? Nice. So I can put the Cinder Vines back on top, which puts me down to five, and then absorb it. I'm going to do this first. Yeah, I got my hair cut, uh, like, two days ago, I think. Hmm. Barely. We were about to start stabilizing. Barely. Barely. 
Giant Killer is really good against shifting Ceratops also. Now I'm going to take out another Borrower and play another Planar Cleansing. Alright, game number three. We're back on the play. I wish we had like three more lands in the hand. <laughs> no, not really. This is just fine. We'll start with the cove. No, I mean we were we were taking lethal. I couldn't make I couldn't make a block that could stay alive. The Ceratops is protection from blue egg, so I couldn't block the Ceratops. So the Ceratops hit us for five. We were at six. And then we just block one Paradise Druid and the other kills us. Cinder vines. Has been quite annoying. They're just making the one one. I was tapped out. I didn't have either gust, but yeah, I was tapped out because I played the Gadwick. So my one blocker couldn't block. Why can't you be permanent? Why can't I exile this thing? All right, so need to find planar cleansing. Usually Opt would be a good card. But not with double Cinder Vines in play.
I'm only playing the one Brazen Borrower. Maybe we should have taken that one out for the last Planar, planar Cleansing. Been nice to bounce the one one. Could like the the better play for me is taking the 1-1 one, one and, the, and them not having another 1-1. One, one. That's certainly better for me, but it's just so risky if they have another 1-1, one, one, then I'm taking too much damage. That's just kind of too risky. But, you know, it's, it's even better. You know, it's better to just get rid of the token so I don't have another Love Struck Beast under here because Planar Cleansing, they get these things back. Of course. Obviously, that's the Cinder Vines, too. They can pop at any point. Really don't want to devout decree Bone Crusher Giant. It cost me two life. That's a great card. Cards have just not been lining up. Because of these cinder vines. Didn't really realize how annoying the cinder vines card is. Wish I would have left one more mana open and I could cast Opt and tap the Bone Crusher Giant with Opt and then still be able to absorb Cinder Vines, but it's not It's not possible, unfortunately. So just use Absorb as just a gain three life and tap the Bone Crusher Giant, so gain seven life altogether. But I guess we take one. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything that can keep me alive right now. Cinder Vines, getting it done.
No, I mean, we're dead right now. They just popped the cinder vines. We're dead right now. I feel like playing these glass caskets was wrong. I feel like I just... I, I think I over-sideboarded. I think I should not have brought in the glass caskets and just kept... kept Dovin's vetoes. Instead. Yeah, I think I, I think I over sideboarded, because of course Dovin's veto can counter um, the adventure creatures whenever they do the adventure parts as well. So you know we could could counter. Those cards at that point as well. Okay, we're on the draw. If we were on the play, I would be I'd probably be mulliganing. To don't have enough land. But we're on the draw, so we can try to draw into it. Plus my opponent was mulliganing as well. So just slowing him down. It's possible we can outrace with Borrower of the Brazen variety. Wish they'd wait one turn for that because I got a borrower and veto. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Crusader. I mean, Crusader needs to get a real ID. Just keeps on trying to get in here with a fake ID and just keeps getting bounced. Good one. So, of course, they, they need to pressure my Absorb because, of course, my best play is to, to play the Borrower and start cracking back for three. So they need to play something that's very good that forces me to Absorb this turn. 
<laughs> Tired of being bounced, the Crusader got ebbed by time. Time ebbs was a sweet limited card. Huh. Just pass. They want to kill this borrower. I think I let them kill a borrower. Yeah, I let them kill a borrower. That, of course, is the worst way for me for them to kill a borrower. But just for just for me in a consideration wise. That card is good. Come on. So I can't really target the Bone Crusher Giant. I mean, I can, but I take damage, of course. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. So, you know, force them to uh, bounce the, or force them to discard with the Rotting Regisaur. That'll do. Uh, Tuesday, I, I have all the parts except for the case. The case got delayed with the shipping, and it says that it's going to arrive on Tuesday. So that's the new ETA. So I am playing another thing out bef before a potential planar cleansing. You know, easy thing would have been just let them attack. I block with Gadwick, then they activate the knight and kill my Gadwick. But by doing this, it does kind of incentivize my opponent to play even more stuff. And Rotting Regisaur. I was going to say it incentivizes them to get rid of their hand. 
is what, is what I was going to say, but... Now we got those three very big threats out of here. Just a couple smaller threats. Um, What's up, fake? Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. Three seven for the third month. Thank you so much. All right, gutter bones back in here. Castle Ardenville is perfect. Making another blocker for us. So this game looks pretty great for us. Should be able to get this. Uh, right now, we're, we're at X equals 8 for finale. Now it's X equals 9. Next turn we can do finale for 10. And this game is over. Yep. Alright, we got game 1 against the aggro deck. That's a good showing. Let's get these devout decrees in here. I mean, this is definitely the matchup for Glass Casket. So we'll play it over Planar Cleansing. Maybe I take out Chemister's Insight. Maybe I just do that. Maybe I just take out Chemister's Insight. With lowering the curve like this, I'm going to take out a land as well. Go down to 26. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the plan. Putting a dino in a glass casket. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good plan. I feel like a dino could break out of a glass casket pretty easily. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a great plan. But that's the plan. Oh, the storm count is five. I have not been updating the storm count. There we go. Updated. Can we get a legion's end up in here? 
Legion's End, Isle 5. Wow. Well, that's a really good start. I guess they did mold a 6 for that start, though, it looks like. So I could shock in and bounce a Fervent Champion, which would save me three life. Just getting rid of one of these Fervent Champions, like, you know, together they deal four. One one Fervent Champion only does one damage, though. So I, I would have definitely Devout Decreed. But I don't know if, if it was worth shocking for the one life. Ugh, now I wish I would have kept. I wish I would have kept that ops now. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it is Frank Karsten. I guess it could be an imposter, but probably not. Looks like we've stabilized. I can no longer stand by and watch. I'll protect you. Now it's just keep hitting land drops. Get to a big finale. Trust me, I have a plan. Or just kill him with Brazen Borrowers. I've got time. I guess that's easy enough. Love the absorb sound effect. Yeah, that is a good one. Be a bad idea. We're actually attacking in our Azorius deck. All right, two and one. We're going to go ahead and play one more match. See, so we're doing four matches with each deck. We're going to go ahead and reset Arena first, though. Because of my slow, slow Azorius deck. 
that we're playing. <laughs> yeah, blue eye control killing with unsummon and unsummons and lands. Yeah, this is this is a lot better brazen borrower deck because than the Sultai ramp deck because of all the uh, instant speed stuff in this deck. Hey, Millennium God, and just the good dis defensive aspects of the deck and everything. This is a better borrower deck for sure. Borrower is awesome here. I didn't like it in the Sultai deck though. Chain smokers. All right, looks like we got Rakdos again. Thanks for that resub there, staying on that seven month streak. This is this song is "Someday" by The Strokes. Ow. Cauldron familiar. So if they play an oven, we'll veto it. If not, we'll just play a 3-1, I suppose. Bad of it. Bad. All right, let's go with Divination Gadwick. Give me this Gadwick back. I don't want your devil rain and mayhem down on my wizened Gadwick. It's too wise.
Alright, well, this is looking great for us. Looks like they flooded out. Does one damage to me, lets, lets them pick up the gutter bones. Just counter it. Alright, well that lets them pick up the gutter bones still. So obviously I can cast the opt here, tap the gutter bones. Um, so yeah, got that one. Okay, more devout decree, more planar cleansing? Question mark. Seems like planar cleansing is kind of only good against oven, or like you know that's that's when it's at its best. So I guess I guess I want planar cleansing, which means no glass casket. Um, I do like Veto a lot here. I'm not sure about Ether Gust. I don't need all of them. We'll get rid of a couple Chemister's Insights. Planar Cleansing's kind of slow, though, too. Um, I did have a Bant Legends deck a, a, a long time ago. I haven't played, I haven't played one in Historic. I just had the Abzan one for Historic. All right, Starman. Have a good time with game night tonight. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're going. I think I'm going to... Get rid of a borrower. I don't know. These borrowers have just been like awesome all the time. Maybe I could just play the three vetoes. Probably could just play the three vetoes. One gust. What do I think about blast zone in this deck? I think it probably could fit a blast zone in here, honestly. Our mana is pretty good. I think it'd probably be over a fabled passage. Yeah, this deck could probably fit one blast zone. I wouldn't hate it. Like if this was Blast Zone, that'd be fine. Yeah, I could see this deck playing a Blast Zone. So our borrower can bounce the oven at end step, and then we can untap and have absorb available to counter it. Obviously, I have the planar cleansing that will get rid of it, but that's not for another four turns, at least. Could be more if we don't hit land drops. Bleh.
All the fabled passages. All right, you got me there. Ugh, this Dreadhorde Butcher is going to hurt now. So we're going to Devout Decree the Butcher. Oh. Okay. Butcher's not going to hurt. Well, I guess. Huh. Do I need to Decree this Midnight Reaper instead? If I don't, they draw two cards. But I take... Four less damage. Time to get ahead of myself. I guess it's more damage than that than we're saving. Yes, yeah, it's not a great use for the Gadwick. Uh, I guess I didn't really say for this video. These sleeves are part of the secret layer bundle. Seven different sleeves in that bundle. Um, or it's just like a code for the seven sleeves. You can get a you can get a code off eBay for them, and that's what I did. I got the code off eBay. Yep, you got it, Steve Supremo. Everything's in for the computer except for the case. That will be in on Tuesday. They get to draw four cards. And also put me down to three. So we're probably dead. So just a, a whole bunch of Dread Horde Butchers. They're playing four Dread Horde Butchers. So we're going to need these, which means I can't play this. It means that we can play this, more of these, though. So Witch's Oven is going to be kind of a problem to deal with. I guess my best way to deal with Resolved Witch's Oven is just bounce it, counter it. But duress is a problem too. I don't know if I want three ether gusts. We're taking the planar cleansings out, I'll cut a land. He threatened your car and it died immediately? No. Oh, this hand's great if we draw white mana. 
Good thing I cut a, a white source. White mana? Not yet. Alright, white mana. Dang. Our, our hand was just so good if we would have drawn white mana. But obviously if we don't draw white mana, we just lose. So I guess that's a thing too. Now we just kind of lose. Possible it's too little, too late, not sure. Why do we have to have the Tranquil Cove right there? Of course, I need I need an untapped white source to play Time Wipe next turn. That's kind of like the only thing that I can have is Time Wipe next turn. I can cast opt and then absorb my own opt to gain three life, which puts me at six and they attack for five. I would not technically die. I don't really see another route for me staying alive here. There's nothing for me to opt and find. Obviously they could just have a single cauldron familiar. Or Witch's Oven, or Dreadhorde Butcher, or anything like that. That's an island. I kept a very risky hand there. Kept a very risky hand. And I regret it. I think our deck was pretty good in that matchup. And I didn't need to keep that risky of a hand that I think that I could just mulligan and have a, another pretty good hand there. Um, so yeah, definitely regret that keep. 
It's always better to keep more lands with this deck than less lands. But there we go. There's Azorius Control. We went 2-2, two and two, but honestly, it felt like a better deck than the Soltai Ramp deck that went 3-1. and one. Um, it kind of can kind of show you how records are misleading a little bit. This felt like a better deck uh, whenever I was playing it. Um, but yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I, I, li I really like the, the Giant Killers. Uh, the Aether Gust and the main deck were just awesome. Um, yeah, basically like everything about this deck, except for really the Glass Casket. I, I don't like the Glass Caskets. I don't like having Glass Casket and Planar Cleansing. Because those are the same kind of matchups that you, you kind of want both. <clears throat> I think I would just play... As far as like what to play instead, I would definitely play a fourth Devout Decree because I think that the matchups that you want Glass Casket, you also want Devout Decree. It's like I would, I would much rather just have four of those. Then I don't know. I'd, I'd kind of want to play something else. Some other anti. Anti creature. Like, can you just play, like, Divine Arrow? Like, is this just too silly? Or can, can you just play, like, two Divine Arrows? Dude, Divine Arrow kills Questing Beast. Divine Arrow is sweet. Like, what if you just play two Divine Arrow? That's not a card you see in standard too much, but. Like, what's wrong with this card? It doesn't get rid of Spellbreaker, of course. We got other things for Spellbreaker. And it doesn't get rid of the 3 mana 5-5. Five five. But you can, like, kill the 1-1, one one, I guess. Um, this is... Similar, but I think Divine Arrow is definitely better. Yeah, like what if you just played a couple Divine Arrows? Kill a Questing Beast. It's not spectacular in the Rakdos Aggro matchup, or like that Rakdos matchup that we're just facing. Like, you know, just, just killing... Basically, all those creatures is not as good as exiling for sure, but I, I think that I just wouldn't bring it in there. That I you'd because you, those decks are the witches oven decks where you want to have a like you know one or two planar cleansings there, and then you, you know you now have the four devout decree uh, for those matchups. But this is just really good against like gruel. Um, what about against? Is this good enough against Golgari? Is Divine Arrow good enough, good enough against Golgari? I mean, it takes out Rankle and Questing Beast. So, yeah, I think it would be good against Golgari because it takes out Rankle and Questing Beast. It's not spectacular against the early stuff, but they're probably attacking you with, like, the Edgewall Innkeeper, and you can probably get an Edgewall Innkeeper with it, too. So, yeah. And those decks always have like the little one one, so you don't really want Gideon's Triumph. I don't know. I would I would just try out some Divine Arrow there instead. But everything else looked very good. <clears throat> Everyone forgets about Divine Arrow because White was atrocious and War Limited. Uh, it's been yeah, it's been pretty bad in the last few sets for sure. No, I don't think you. I don't think it's really an essence capture slot. I think you want removal there, but essence capture is another option. Divine arrow kills shifting ceratops too. Yeah, there's a good amount of people playing shifting ceratops these days, and this kills shifting ceratops. So that's awesome. So yeah, yeah, just get some divine arrow up in here. All right, uh, but that, there you go. That's 
Azorius Control. Um, like the deck a whole lot. I would change like that that little bit. I'd take out the glass caskets there and try out those things. Um, but definitely a good deck here. Gadwick was awesome for sure. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like, subscribe buttons over there. Leave some comments. Of course, let me know what you think of the deck and what do you think about Divine Arrow as an option uh, for those scenarios that I was just talking about um, instead of Glass Casket or if you're a big fan of Glass Casket for if there's like a, a something that you really like Glass Casket for, let me know in the comments there. But thank you so much for watching some Azorius Control and I'll see you for the next video.